so <coughs> welcome all of you and uh, you have come here despite quite heavy rain outside so it means uh, there is some <coughs> good intention there hmm and um, i will just attempt to share some some <coughs> some thought some experience like this so that it's not a um, lecture but hopefully it is a a journey together it is a practical experience that you can have the <coughs> all of us we seek happiness this is common and uh, sometimes we are happy also <coughs> and uh, most other times not and uh, we constantly in our life we try to find where is this happiness where where can we find it and most of the time <coughs> we try to seek this happiness in something outside ourselves maybe if we solve this problem maybe if we find this job or this relationship or this child or this like this or achieve something or win a first prize somewhere but soon this um, happiness it disappears and then it's not there anymore and then other emotions uh, <coughs> come many of them quite unpleasant grief is there anxiety is there hatred is there anger is there jealousy is there and we get caught up in this um, in this play in this in this drama of these emotions of these thoughts and we keep uh, uh, going up and down like one day happy one day unhappy sad happy happy sad and a uh, lot of turmoil also anxiety and worry and disappointment and <coughs> why me you know why everything happens to me oh i'm not good i'm i'm useless i'm not good enough oh i did so much for so many people and what did i get and this kind of different why i cannot succeed why what different thoughts and uh, emotions they occupy our space and uh, we 
we just are going up and down in this So, is there a, any solution to this? Is there a way out of this? And our ancient rishis and so many wise people they say there is a way out of it. And this way is simple and it is practical and it is possible and we can do it right now. And this is this way of doing it <coughs> is simply one can say awareness or inquiry. to to find out where is this all this turmoil uh, arising from and is there something <coughs> deeper to it something behind it something more profound How can we do, how can we do this? By looking, by watching, by watching what? By watching, where is this entire drama happening? Where is this conversation happening? And we have to conclude that all this is happening in something called the mind. How do we know this? Because when we are in deep sleep, when the mind is shut off, then there are no thoughts, there is no emotion then there is only silence, only peace. In deep sleep, when there are no dreams even, there is no emotion, there is no anger, there is no grief. We are peaceful. My father would tell his guests, you know, his friends, he would say, my son is a very nice boy when he is in deep sleep. <laughs> in deep sleep, we are not uh, having these things. So it must be the mind because it's only the mind that gets switched off in deep sleep. The rest of us is there. So it is worth to examine what is this mind and what does it consist of. And when you start to look, when you start to witness, you see that the mind is full of thoughts and emotions. This is very interesting actually. Just give little attention to your own mind. What are these thoughts? Thoughts about the past. What happened? What happened? Thoughts about the future. What's going to happen? Thoughts about the present. What is happening now? What is all this going on? Where is this leading? 
what's going to happen next? These thoughts, they arise in the mind <coughs> and then they just subside in the mind. None of these thoughts stay. Every moment there is another thought. Ten minutes ago you had a completely different thought than now. You thought, how am I going to make my way through the rain? Am I going to reach home again or not? That thought is not there right now. Till I reminded you. So thoughts come and they go like clouds passing. None of them stay. And what is very, very interesting is that <coughs> all of these thoughts and emotions, they occur to someone who we call I. Without this I, these thoughts and emotions they don't have a place to hang. You know, you need a, a hanger to hang your, your, your shirt. This I is that hanger. Think about it. You always say, I think, I feel, I want, I don't want. I love, I hate. I am happy, I am sad. So everything, thought or emotion occurs to somebody who is called I. You cannot say sad, it doesn't make sense. Happy, you know, no sense at all. It cannot hang there, the sadness or the happiness or the thought cannot hang. It needs uh, an eye to get attached to. Just examine at this moment. This is uh, the moment. There is no <laughs> nothing in the future. Just now. Start to look, start to witness that every thought arises because of something called I. The I is the first thought that arises. And on this thought, other thoughts hang themselves or attach themselves. Now, this I, to whom all these thoughts and emotions occur, who is it that we call this I? Who is this I? This is a very interesting question. There was a very famous saint, Ramana Maharishi, in South India. As a boy, he left his house when he was 14 years old and went and sat down in a place called Arunachala, which is a mountain. And for the next 25 years, he didn't speak a word. Nobody even knew his name. He just sat and he was in bliss. 
some people would come and feed him the food otherwise he would have died and he didn't matter to him also if he lived or died insects were crawling all over him and biting him it didn't bother him little boys were throwing stones at him he didn't open his eyes he was in his own bliss and he had the 25 years he didn't speak finally they forced him because they found that when you were in his presence when you were around him you experienced a deep silence just being around him produced in you a deep silence he had to say nothing do nothing and that is how people came to know that he is a holy man he is a spiritual man he is a saint that's why they called him maharishi though he didn't speak first they called him mauna swami means the one who doesn't speak but they recognized his holiness and when they forced him to speak after so many years they said tell us tell us tell us what is it that you realized and he said only one sentence he says find out who you are who am i just find this out and everything else will be solved so this is the question who is this i to whom all these thoughts and emotions are attached it's a very interesting question because when you say i and you point to yourself you are often talking about something called identity this is my name you know i am so and so or you talk about your gender i am a male or a female or you talk about your role i am a father or a son or you talk about your country i am an indian or a american or you talk about your profession i am a doctor or a lawyer but what are these different things that you identify these are all your mental concepts who told you you are this name is it is it really you are you really a doctor or is it a role you took on are you really an indian or is it somebody told you you are indian is india itself a concept who defined it are you really a father or a son or is it a role you took on yourself are any of these things that you associate your i with is it permanent is it real is it true or is it a concept is it a thought of the mind this is the question and it is to this concept it is to this artificial reality that things happen this artificial reality becomes happy or sad becomes angry becomes disappointed say i am the father how can my son talk to me like that so from this created sense of identity comes your emotion to this happens insult to this happens disappointment 
I'm a very rich man. I lost the money. My God, I'm going to become poor. It is to this identity that that poverty happens. So, this sense of I also is a thought, is a concept of the mind. It's not real. It's not true. It's not permanent. It's changing also. Thoughts change. Emotions change. The very identity of you changes. Some years ago, your identity was you were a child. Are you a child now? That changed. You could get old, your identity will change, you will become an old man. My mother would say, when I came to Bombay, they used to call me Betty. Then they started calling me Benji. Then as time passed by, they are calling me Maji. Now they call me Dadi. Who are you? Your identity, is that permanent? Which of this Benji, Maji are you? It changes all the time. Then there is a question. The question is, is there something that does not change? Beyond all these changes, is there something that does not change? And if so, what is it? Let us try to find out right now and uh, know for ourselves why should somebody tell to us. So what you can do is for the time being, just for the next 10 minutes, that's all, let us put our mind away and see if there is something else that exists. Shall we do like this? Let us see. How to put the mind away? For 10 minutes only. So what we have to do is to put away everything that is in the mind, that the mind consists of. So what does it consist of? We just said it consists of thoughts and emotions. So for the time being, just put away your thoughts, thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future. Put it away. What does it mean, put it away? That means, don't show interest in it. Don't indulge it. Don't go along with it. If it comes, ignore it. Let's put away for 10 minutes only all thoughts of the past and the future and even the present even the thought of what is happening now what does it mean how long is it going to last put it away Don't entertain. All concepts, 
I am this, I am that, my identity, I am, I have to do this, I achieve this, put it all away. This is my name, this is my house, this is my religion. These are thoughts also. Don't entertain them. Let it, let it go. Just for now. Delete, empty your mind completely. Even the thought that I am deleting my thoughts, delete this thought also. Any thought of action, delete. Just be with total emptiness of the mind. Let the mind be completely empty. Become aware of your breathing. The breath goes in, the breath goes out. Become a witness to the breathing process. Observe the breathing, observe the mind, if there is any thought, emotion, just leave it alone, don't chase it, don't empower it. Enter into the witness mode. You are just witnessing. You are not thinking. You are not breathing. You are the witness. The lungs breathe, the mind thinks. You are the witness. Just let go.
from this position. See if you can answer a few questions. When the mind is totally empty, is there still something left? Is there something deeper to the mind? Is there a sense of being or presence? Does this presence, does it have a name? Does it have a form? Does it have a time? Does it have a location? Does it have a beginning? Does it have a death? Does it change?
does it come and go? Does it have emotions? Can it get happy or sad? Are you now sleeping or awake? Or both? Does this presence have opposites? Good and bad, high and low, in and out, you and me. Is it personal? Is it your identity? Is there a distance between this presence and you? Is this presence associated with anything such as I am this or I am that? Or is it just is and exists as I am or presence or consciousness Was there a time when this presence was not? Or when it will not be?
is this presence different in different people or is it the same? Not only people, but everything in this universe. Is it different? Does this have a quarrel with anyone or a complaint with anything? Is this presence contained in your body or is everything including your body and your mind and everything else in this universe contained in that presence? Is this presence happy or is it just is as it is, not definable by any word or expression except to say it is or I am. Is there a time to this presence? Does it have day or night or season? Mm-hmm. 
slowly reorient yourself back to the present where you are what is the time and space here and then let your eyes slowly open <coughs> 